Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video. This is a video that's been on the topic of my mind. The topic for today is, are modern multiplayer games bad for solo queuers? Now what I mean by this is, let's just say you're playing Call of Duty, right? It's a six on six match, but you're playing all by yourself. That's what a solo queue is. You know, there's 11 other people that you may or may not know. I mean, sometimes you run into friends, but you probably don't know them. And, you know, I'm thinking that, at least on the Xbox, these games are slowly but surely becoming more and more not fun for solo gamers. And this is, a lot of this has to do with how us Xbox people, you know, are on Xbox. So, let me give you guys something about voice chat. This is all around voice chat and skill gap, okay? So, we have voice chat. If you guys ever played Halo 2, uh, it's proximity voice chat. Everyone on every team can hear each other. It's great, but they got rid of that. Now we have game chat. So you plug in your mic, everyone on your team can hear you, boom, you communicate, right? So this is where the issues start coming in. We have the anonymity of the internet, and we get a lot of people, let me just say this. Two people go at each other, this guy dies, he complains that he's dying. You're gonna mute him. Now the guy's playing music through his mic. You mute him. Everyone gets annoying, so you just want to start muting everyone. Eventually, you get some friends together. You guys don't want to go into game chat. You want to go into the party chat. So you party chat. You don't even hear what's going on in the game lobby. Right? Then, you also have the solo player against the team of two or three people that are highly coordinated. Maybe they've been on an esports team. There's no way you can beat that. It is inherent now that in these multiplayer games, you need friends right or communication at the least now we have games like uh sea of thieves and PUBG and fortnite that st are starting to almost fix this problem where you are required to have communication in these games to do good i mean sea of thieves we didn't the first time me and my friend ragnar played we played with a lobby of four people we didn't have communications we didn't even get the boat to another island so, you know, it's bad. C PC, it's way easier because you can just type, right? But on console, I'm starting to see this shift. This is me personally, and this is not any sci not scientific, but I'm seeing this shift of modern multiplayer games are just not for solo queue people anymore. And I, I, I don't know if this is bad or good, honestly, I don't. But I'm just pointing out what I see. So when I play these games with my friends, Star Wars Battlefront 2, I don't like playing it solo anymore because, you know, I'm streaming it solo because it's a lot more fun with Ragnar. And honestly, I do better with Ragnar than without him, right? PUBG though, I like to stream it because solo queue, it's a free for all. Free for all is great for solo people if you don't want to communicate with anyone. But then the problem is, Free for all, you're all fighting each other. You want to be toxic towards each other, but sometimes you just want to talk, you know, and free for all each other and not even worry about what you're doing. I mean, me and Devin, we have done 1v1 battles on Call of Duty, right? And even though, I mean, that's technically a free for all. Or me, Devin, and Ragnar, or me, Devin, and someone else we played with, right? And we, we've had times where we're, beat, we're fighting each other and we don't even talk about what we're doing until like the very end when we're laughing and telling each other we suck. So, you know, I just think that there's a couple things that if you're a solo gamer, there's a couple things that need to change for multiplayer games to be fun for you. Number one is games need to encourage game chat. I'm not saying this is good or bad, okay? But don't force people to go into game chat. That's bad. But they can encourage game chat. Second is everyone needs to practice a little bit better etiquette when it comes to gaming. You're always gonna be toxic sometimes, you're always gonna be mean sometimes, you're never gonna be perfect. But try to try to not be so toxic, you know, because maybe if you're in game chat and you're nice, the people that are the lurkers, they have their mics in but they don't talk, they might start talking to you. I've had that happen before. We've actually had a guy in Rainbow Six Siege, I was playing with is me and two other randoms. We've had We've been super nice, encouraging. Two guys 
plugged in their mics and were like, you guys seem nice, we want to talk with you. And we did five, five bands for a couple games. And we won all of them, by the way. Just going to point that out. So try to be nicer. And honestly, that's it. That's all that can change. I mean, I, I will say I love... I, I value the ability to go from game chat and party chat more than forcing people to go to game chat. I love that ability, and I want games to keep that. But this is just for if you're a solo queuer and you want to get some people, to, you know, encourage them to talk with you, you know, on the multiplayer experience, be nice. And stay in game chat and talk. Sometimes if you see someone talking in game chat, you go to game chat just to hear what they say. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, you can tell me in the comments below. What are your experiences with game chat? Good or bad? Mine are mostly good because I don't go into game chat too often. And when I do, I get really lucky and find nice people. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Stream Vlog or Steam It Post or whatever I decide to make.